Well, you guys probably all came in here really excited for the thrilling conclusion of our, of our little series on church discipline. And alas, I'm going to have to make you wait a little bit longer for that. Um, because I think I'm supposed to give a simple Thanksgiving-ish sermon instead. Uh, so I hope that's okay with you. I've got a five-word phrase that I never really thought about before. And, and the Lord just gave it to me. I just opened my Bible one evening and, and it was just there within 60 seconds. And I knew I had something fresh from God. Does He ever do that for you? He just gives you something from the Word. And, and you know it's a gift. And so anyway, I've been thinking about this and, and I want to share it with you. It's, it's here in Matthew chapter 10. If you'd like to turn there, Matthew chapter 10. And it, it really kind of parallels what Zach shared earlier this morning. Jesus sending out the 70 and to evangelize. Well, here's the account of Jesus sending out the 12 disciples to evangelize. So I'll just begin reading at verse 7. You're welcome to stand up again if you'd like while we, we read a few verses here. Matthew 10 and verse 7 he says, as you go, preach, saying, as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. Freely you received, freely give. Do not acquire gold or silver or copper for your money belts, or a bag for your journey, or even two coats, or sandals, or a staff, for the worker is worthy of his support. You may be seated. We'll just stop reading there. And let's pray again. Lord, we ask that you would help us now as we look into your word again. Help this really simple idea to come across to our hearts in a way that would help us. Help us, Lord, just to be able to latch on to this truth. Help us to see it. Help us to rejoice in it as we should. Thank You, Lord, for Your abundant grace to each one of us. Thank You, Lord, for the way You save us in, in, such, in such unique ways, and yet You bring us all to the same place to know the Lord Jesus Christ. We're happy to be Your people. And we pray for those that don't know You yet. Lord, we do ask You again for them, that You might save them, that soon we might hear their testimonies of Your grace in their lives. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. So here our Lord is sending out His twelve disciples. He sends them two by two into the next towns. Uh, before Jesus would get there. And He, and he tells them, your, your main job is to preach. It's to preach about the coming kingdom. So we would say they're preaching the gospel. But in addition to preaching the gospel, He gives them power to do miracles. Power to, uh, what does He say? Uh, heal the sick, raise the dead. <laughs> you ever notice that? He sent them to raise the dead. Cleanse the lepers and cast out demons. He gave them power such that when he encou they encounter these problems, that they have the power to actually help people in really big ways and do these miracles. And the mir miracles they do will naturally confirm the message that they preach. And Jesus also discusses with them the financing of this traveling ministry work. How are their costs going to be covered on this deal well he tells them in verse 9 not to accumulate any money that's going to make it different isn't it they can't take any money with them they can't take money ahead of time they can't accumulate money along the way they're not even supposed to bring along extra clothes it's like jesus wanted them to feel poor and needy and dependent and forced to trust god every day to supply their needs throughout the whole thing, instead of relying on their own resources. And that, you know, that sounds kind of, kind of strange and risky, but it worked. Uh, and we know it worked out because Jesus comes back to it later towards the end of, of the book of Luke. In Luke 22, verse 35, speaking to the disciples, Jesus said, When I sent you out without money belts, 
and bag and sandals, you did not lack anything, did you? And they said, no, nothing. So the Lord provided along the way. I'm just giving you that context so I can focus today on a thing that Jesus said at the end of verse 8. These five words, freely you received, freely give. Freely you received, freely give. The ESV says you received without paying, give without pay. Our Lord here links together two big concepts, doesn't he? On the one hand, it's the concept of gratitude. Look at all you've received. On the other hand, it's the concept of giving. (laughs) Freely give the same way. When we consider on the one hand how much we've received, it should motivate us on the other hand to give freely out of our abundant blessings. To be ready to give, eager to share, just as freely as we've received to give it out. And so I want to just talk today about these two sides, the receiving side and the giving side in, that, are, that are found here in these five words, this little phrase, freely you received, freely give. So we're starting with the receiving side, the gratitude side, freely you received. Are, are we aware of this? I mean, are we daily amazed, brothers and sisters, are we amazed at how much we've received? How freely we've received from God. How much we've been blessed. I know we've all got trials and troubles and problems and some of them are really bad. And and, and for me, I'm I'm willing to focus 95% of my attention on what's wrong. On this, here's this thing that's broken, and I'm trying to fix this thing. Here's this problem, you know, the squeaky wheel gets all the attention. We don't think about all the wheels that are working just fine, right? Uh, But let's step back today a moment, and particularly Thanksgiving season is good for this, to step back a little bit from all the problems and see the big picture of how abundantly blessed we all are. God has given us so much. We have received such a bounty from Him. All of us have. Regardless of what your problems are, I can tell you, if you are a Christian, you have received much from the Lord. He has blessed you with much. He's given you much. He's poured out His mercy on you in amazing, big ways. And God is the giver of all these blessings. Let's be real clear where they all come from. We know James 1.17, right? Every good and perfect gift comes from where? Comes from above. Comes from the Father of lights with whom is no variation or shifting shadow. He's showering His gifts down on us all the time. Guys, it's all grace. It says these, you, you've received freely. Freely. Grace. It's a gift. You've not earned these blessings. You've not merited these blessings. You've not purchased these blessings. You've not deserved these blessings by being such good people lately. But God is just pouring them out on you out of His heart of love all the time. 1 Timothy 6-7 says, We have brought nothing into the world. So we cannot take anything out of it either. I mean, we all started out with zero, right? I mean, we're all born. How? Just helpless, hungry, naked, screaming babies. That's all we were, right? We all started out there. Everything you have now is more than you started with, right? Came with nothing. It's all been given. It's just grace. It's also the idea of 1 Corinthians 4, 7. Paul says, who regards you as superior? What do you have that you did not receive? And if you did receive it, why do you boast as if you'd not received it? (laughs) If everything you have are just gifts from God, then why are you so proud about them (laughs) anyway? It's just grace. It's grace from Him. And God's not just met our basic needs. I mean, Paul says if we have food and covering with ease, we should be content. Yeah, but God's given us way more than that, especially in America. We have 
so much. And, and that's from God too. First uh, Timothy 6 verse 17, he's talking to those who, who are rich in this present world. And, and really, that, that's pretty much all Americans are in that category compared to the rest of the world. And it says that it's God who richly supplies us with all things to enjoy. It's, it's, not just, it's not just food and covering, man. He, he, he gives us all things richly to enjoy. Rich blessings. Great enjoyment. And the greatest of God's gifts, of course, is, is what the Bible calls the indescribable gift. There at the end of 2 Corinthians 9, pointing, I think, to the Lord Jesus Christ Himself. He's the greatest the greatest of God's gift. God has provided a lamb for us. He's provided a lamb to suffer wrath, to endure the outpouring of divine punishment we deserved, that He might redeem us from our sins by His own precious blood. That's the greatest gift I can think of. And so our, our, our biggest blessings all connect back to the cross, don't they? They all go back to the Lord Jesus, to His atoning work for us, to His resurrection from the dead. In Christ, Paul says, we've been blessed with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. It's all in Christ. We've got the whole thing. Lavish blessing. We've received so much. But I'm not content to quit with just general statements either. I, I mean, that, that old hymn says, count your blessings, name them one by one. We used to sing that at the Baptist church every Thanksgiving, I think. And so let me name some blessings, just some things that came. This is not an exhaustive list, just some stuff that came to my mind as I was writing this. What are some things that I have freely received from God that I'll acknowledge and so I'll just start on the, on the natural side. I mean, just, just the fact I'm alive. We're alive. We exist. Been made as a unique individual in the image of God. I'm alive today. I'm healthy enough to come to church meeting. That's mercy that I've received. Not only am I alive, I've got some abilities. I can do some things. We all have some natural talents. Each of you is particularly good at certain things. Well, where did that come from? God. God gave you that. That's a blessing. That's something you've received from Him. I'm thankful that I was born in America. It's a blessing to be here. It's still one of the best places in the world to live. And I didn't have anything to do with Showing up here, God just gave me those mercies. It's grace. I'm thankful for all the material and financial possessions that I have. Again, it's God's mercy, most of it, because God's enabled me to work over the course of my life. He gives you the power to make wealth, I think it says in the Old Testament. I'm thankful for the family that I have, the family I was born into for excellent parents and wonderful siblings. And then the family I acquired, <laughs> the wife, the children, the Lord has blessed me with. I'm thankful for wonderful friendships too. I, I, I think, you know, there's literally been hundreds of Christians in particular over the course of my life that have been kind to me, that have loved me in ways I didn't deserve. I'm so thankful for those blessings I've received. But then the biggest benefits as Christians, we'd say, are on the spiritual side. And to have a saving relationship with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. To be saved! There's nothing bigger than that. If you, if you walked in here and you could sing these songs, these testimony songs, and say, that's true of me! Praise God! I know the Lord today. That's huge. To say, yes, I've been born again. I've got a new heart. The Holy Spirit indwells me. There's encouraging fruit in my life that God's done something here. Forgiveness of sins. 
the righteousness of Christ put to my account what the gospel talks about. That's real for me. Praise God for that. I've received that from him. The love of God. How about that? God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit have invited me, a poor vile sinner, into their house of wine, into this, into this relationship of love in the Holy Trinity that they've enjoyed from eternity past. And they said, you can come on in and be part of this with us. Amazing to be loved by God. The length and width and height and depth, you know. Praise God for the Bible. Praise God for this, this wonderful deposit of truth revealed to us. Praise God for every one of his precious promises to us. Praise God for his warnings too. Praise God for his commands. Praise God for everything that keeps us out of trouble. Praise God for the reality of prayer. Oh, that he hears my voice. I can just talk to him. We can all talk to him. We can talk to him without even saying any words. Just our hearts can commune with the Lord. And he hears us. He draws near to us. And he'll even do stuff because we ask him to like a father. What a deal. Praise God for spiritual gifts. If you're, if you're saved, you've got abilities to serve the Lord in, in ways that are, that are beyond the natural. To to serve the Lord, to serve His people, to have a a role in the church that's special. That's been, you've received that, you've been given that. And then the last thing on my list is the hope of heaven. (laughs) Praise God, this world isn't the end. Praise God, this isn't all we got. But our treasure is in heaven. Oh, we're close to it. Someday we're going to depart and be with Christ, which is far better, right? And not just our spirits with the Lord, but 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 soon after the resurrection will happen, our spirits will be joined with glorified bodies. We'll live in a new heavens and new earth with the Lord Jesus forever and ever and ever, in a place in which righteousness dwells. Be perfect in every way. A world made by His love for His people. These are big blessings. We've received a lot. That's the point. You can make make a giant list. I'm just mentioning some things that came to my mind. We've received a lot as believers. We have so much. And and of course, I'm talking about this from a Christian's perspective because that's the context here. Jesus is talking to His disciples about all they have received. But... I want to say something too to you that are not Christians here yet. Because you also have received very much grace from God. You've received blessings too. God has been very good to you. Even if you're not saved yet, He's been very good to you. And and Jesus talked about this, talked about it earlier there in Matthew, Matthew chapter 5. He says, he says, look, God, God causes the sun to rise on the evil and the good. He sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. Everybody gets certain blessings, just all humans get them. That's God's blessing to you. And then Paul takes up this idea talking to pagans there on Mars Hill in Acts 14 or wherever he was at. And, and it, it sa- he says, God did not leave Himself without witness in that He did good and gave you rains from heaven and fruitful seasons, satisfying your hearts with food and gladness. He's talking to lost people. And he says, a witness from God in your life is how good God has been to you all these years. All the good stuff God's given you. How He's taken care of you. He's fed you. He's not just kept you alive, He's given you gladness. All the happy times that you have as a lost person, that's the goodness of God. You've received things from Him and it's meant to be a witness to you. You have tasted how good God is. So let that kindness lead you to repentance. Let that goodness of God lead you to put your faith in Him forever. 
Like these testimonies we heard today, to, to a complete trust in Jesus Christ as your Savior. Anyway, that's the receiving side. Freely you have received. I hope you're convinced we've freely received an awful lot from the Lord. So let's just turn to the other side, the giving side. He says, freely you've received, freely give. Jesus' logic is simple. First, contemplate how much God has blessed you, and then imitate God in blessing others. See that? Remembering God's gifts, counting God's blessings, should cause us to be generous to those around us, those we encounter. That's what Jesus wanted these disciples to do as they went out, traveled around, meeting different people. He wanted them to have the sense that I'm, I'm out here just to give out. Just to give out blessing. I've received all this blessing from Jesus. Now I'm, I can give it out to people uh, everywhere I go. And, and Jesus not only taught this, not only told the, His disciples to do this, but, but of course He did it Himself. His own example the Lord Jesus was always this way. His, his life, you read His life there in the Gospels, and His whole life was a generous outpouring of Himself to bless folks, wasn't it? It's summed up, I think, in, in 2 Corinthians 8, verse 9. Paul says, you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though He was rich, yet for your sake He became poor, so that you through His poverty might become rich. Jesus impoverished Himself to make us rich. He's just telling us to be like Him, you see. When Peter described Jesus' ministry there in Acts 10, uh, preaching in, 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 in verse 38 of Acts 10, uh, Peter says Jesus went about doing good and healing all oppressed by the devil. And so you just have this sense of Jesus' ministry. He's just going about doing good everywhere. Doing good, doing good, blessing people. And, and it, it sure seems to me like, like Jesus, Jesus blessed lots of people and healed lots of people and fed lots of people who never did get saved later on. I mean, they, just, they received the blessings and they were happy to be healed and they went on their merry way. They never believed in Christ as Messiah. They never joined His church. Because his church ends up pretty small at the beginning of the book of Acts. And yet that didn't slow Jesus down, did it? He just kept on going around doing good, doing good everywhere he could. Impoverishing himself to make others richer. And so we're just supposed to be like Jesus in this. And, and, that's, and that's, of course, what these, these 12 disciples did in their, in their uh, ministry work here in the Gospels. And, and you see that continuing into the book of Acts when you see the, the apostles in action. I, I think there that, that great story in Acts chapter 3 where, where Peter and John are going up to the temple and there's that, there's that, uh, that lame beggar there at the temple. And, and, and Peter's words to the, to the beggar was, uh, you know, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I give thee. Little King James lingo there. And... In the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, walk. Right? He says, I don't, have, I don't have money for you, but I've got something way better to give you. I've, I've got the power of Christ here. Christ can help set you free. And Christ did. We're in that position. Paul describing his own ministry in 2 Corinthians 6 Verse 10, he says, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing yet possessing all things. Paul says, I'm, I'm pretty poor right now. I don't have much. You know, a lot of the times his letters are written from prison and stuff. He says, I'm poor, but I'm making many rich. I have the means, because I have Christ, I have the means of making others rich, of blessing others with great riches. Don't you ever think, don't you ever think that you cannot bless others, that you cannot make others rich as a Christian? Um, you say, well, you know, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not financially wealthy. I don't, I don't know what I can do for anybody else. No, you, have, you are in a position 
to give extremely valuable things to others. That's what Jesus' point was here in Matthew 10. He says, I don't want you guys going around with money, but you have something better than money to give. You can, you can give the power of Christ to somebody. You can give the, the truth of the Gospel and even, even miracles of Christ uh, in other people's lives. So we, so we should not have the thought, you know, oh, if only I had that guy's skills, if only I had her spiritual gifts, if only I had that guy's time, if I only had her money or whatever, then I could really serve the Lord. No, I, I assure you, there's ways you can be a blessing. You can freely give right now, right now, even with your limited resources, even with limited time and money and skills and gifts or whatever. However, whatever you see your, your deficiencies right now, there's ways you can freely give. Remember how much Jesus did that one day with one boy's lunch. Remember that? It's like, oh, it's just, it's just five little barley cracker loaf things and, and two fish. That won't amount to anything. But he gives it to Jesus, right? He, he gives the whole thing to Jesus. And in the hands of Jesus, that little, that little gets multiplied into much and ends up feeding thousands of people. That's the idea here. So here in Matthew 10, Jesus is sending out his disciples, not with spiritual, not with, not with financial assets. He specifically says no, but he sends them with spiritual power. He sent them, he sent them first to preach about the kingdom, to tell the gospel, in other words, but also to heal the sick and raise the dead and cleanse the lepers and cast out demons. Those are really big, really valuable things that they were able to do for people still that way today now because of medical technology I, I think there really is less physical suffering around us in the world than there would have been at Jesus time but I think there's even more suffering of other kinds I think there's more mental suffering emotional suffering spiritual suffering out there I I think I I I mean, I see a franticness and a desperation and a despair in our culture like I've never seen in my lifetime anyway. Maybe those alive during the, the Vietnam era or whatever would say, well, it's, I've, I've seen worse. But I've certainly not seen worse than the way it is now. The needs are just are huge out there. And so, so what an opportunity this is, brothers and sisters, to just to be conduits, to be pipes. <laughs> Those who freely receive grace from the Lord are able to freely give grace to others. That's what He calls us to. It's so simple. We're just pass-through entities here. Use some tax terminology. Just pass-through entities. You receive on the one hand, you give with the other. It's so simple. Because somebody told me the gospel, I'm able to turn around and tell other people the gospel. Because, because I've received good Bible teaching for all my life, really, then I'm able to teach others some precious truths from the Bible. Because I've received forgiveness, I can give forgiveness. Because countless people have prayed for me I can turn around and pray for others. And God actually hears my prayers. God can do big things for them. God could raise them from the dead if He wants to. In answer to our prayers or whatever. Because I have received so much love. I can give out some love to others. Freely you've received. Freely give. We just pass through a little bit of God's grace. The people we meet. That was Jesus' point here. It's so simple, but really big. And as we do that, as we function as that conduit of, of grace, we'll find Jesus' words are true where He says it's more blessed to give than to receive. Talking about the receiving side and the giving side, there's actually more joy over here. There's actually more joy on the giving out than the taking in. 
And as the disciples work to bless others, as we pointed out before, Jesus intentionally put them in a position where they would have to constantly depend on God to meet all their needs. They'd have to trust the Lord each day. He wanted them to feel that dependency, that weakness. He he, he says you can't carry money with you and you can't even bring a bag along with you. It's like he didn't want there to be any stockpiling from one day to the next. It, it, it reminded me of, of the way God did the manna there in the, in the Old, Old Testament when the Israelites are in the wilderness. God says, you, you're going to have to go out every morning and get the manna. And you can't keep it from one day to the next. It'll spoil. You've got to trust God every morning for new supplies. You can't accumulate it ahead of time and then just trust your accumulation. No, every day you're cast on God. And And so he wanted his disciples to minister that way every day. I've got to receive fresh grace that I can give fresh grace to people. It also meant that these disciples could not use their ministry as a way to enrich themselves. Right? If if they were, you know, if they if you if you can go around healing a bunch of people, I mean, that's a pretty valuable service. Especially at that time with, with not much medical care. I mean, it's like everybody would have health problems, surely. And if you could go around and really just heal people, I mean, you know, that's, that's, that, that, has, that has a value. And so, so what, if, what if they heal some rich guy's kid, you know, and the guy comes and hands them a big bag of money, you know, he's so grateful. Well, they can't keep it. They can't accumulate it. They can't take it along. So they've just got to turn around and give it away again. What a contrast to, to some of the faith healing folks today that flaunt their private planes and stuff. It reminds me of the story in, in 2 Kings chapter 5 about, about old Naaman being healed from his leprosy. And he was, he was a, rich, a rich guy and, and, and he was very grateful that he'd been healed and, and through the, the prophet Elisha's uh, ministry there. And he offers Elisha this big gift. And Elisha flat out turns him down. Thought it'd be wrong. But the end of the story, Elisha's servant named Gehazi uh, was, I guess, kind of selfish, covetous guy. And, and, and he, he goes secretly to get some of that gift for himself. And it didn't go well. I mean, the Lord knew, <laughs> Elisha knew. And, and he, he ends up being punished with leprosy himself. Uh, for doing that and but honestly I can identify with gaze I in that I I mean my 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 flesh my unredeemed human nature is lazy and selfish and and uh, I mean naturally I'm just naturally doing the calculation all the time you know is this fun Uh, what's in this for me you know uh, it's yeah, what, what am I getting out of this? And and sometimes the sacrifices on the giving side of of just continuing to to love people and serve people and evangelize people and teach people and give to people. Sometimes it doesn't feel all that joyful. Sometimes it's hard going. Sometimes they don't feel very, they don't seem very appreciative or or whatever. And and you get a bad attitude and and. Uh, and so it kind of brings you back to, okay, well, what really is my motivation? Why, why, why do I keep trying to minister, trying, keep trying to be like Jesus going around doing good? And how do you keep on freely giving? And, and, and I think the secret is right here in these five words. Freely you've received, freely give. My, my motivation, my help in continuing to give out is, is by constantly looking to how much I've received. Constantly looking to the grace. This, this giant pipeline of grace that's pouring on me all the time from the Lord. And it's because of that. Because I've received so freely that I can give out. I can give out to others. And oh, the Lord has lavished grace on me he's he's given me not just little dribbles but he's given me of his it says of his fullness we have all received and grace upon grace and i don't know what that means but it's big it's big language right how big the blessings of god are for me he's given us jesus says i came they might have life and life abundantly it's not skimpy 
It's big. It's full. The, 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 as you go on with the Lord, you discover how big and full it is. And so we love people out of that overflowing abundance that we've received from God. We're like billionaires passing out $5 bills. Okay? You can be really free passing out $5 bills if you are a billionaire, right? Because you've got so much. You've got so much. You're never going to run out, right? You've got, you've got basically unlimited supplies of wealth. And, and the Christian is in that position when it comes to ministering to others. Freely we've received. And so freely we can give. We can do good. So that's all I've got. That's my Thanksgiving message. These five simple words. Freely you've received. Freely give. I hope you'll think about these things this week. And, and I hope you'll think about them a long time after that. I, I want to. I want to. I, uh, a, a few weeks ago, I'd never thought about these words in my life. But they've gripped me. And, and now I, I want this to be a motto for the rest of my life. I just want this to be, I want this to be a, you, just kind of a touchstone, kind of a landmark out there. As, as I think about, you know, what, what are the goals for, you know, for me from now to the grave? What, what, I, what I want it to be like? Well, let it be this. Let, let me be one who's freely receiving and therefore freely giving. Let me be like my Lord in this way. I've received so much. I want to give. I want to be generous in the ways the Lord wants. Or make it as a prayer. Say, say Lord, let me give out blessing. Let me give out ministry and love. Let me do it freely. That the same freeness with which You've blessed me. Amen.